What is up everyone, welcome to round three of the Portland Monthly Pre-Modern Paper Magic Afternoons December Tournament. This is round three of four. We don't actually have a cut to top four this month. We will next month though. So we're really just taking the best of the best tables. So without further ado, let's jump into the games. First up, we have Chris on Golgari Oath. Yes, not your usual green white oath deck. This one's splashing a little more into, I would say, the rock territory. Yes, you have your Terravors and your Oath of Druids and Mulches and Mox Diamonds and all that stuff, but we're also running a lot of interaction, more so than a usual Terra Geddon list does. We have Innocent Bloods, Pernicious Deeds, lots of Hand Attack with four Dresses and uh, four Cabals. Really interesting. <laughs> a couple of Chainer's Edicts, or a Chainer's Edict and a Vendetta, it looks like. And then also running some Games Keepers, which if you're not familiar is a four drop. Uh, whenever it dies, it's basically another Oath. But in a creature form, that's a 2-2. Also a Phyrexian Tower, it looks like, to get that sacrifice going for Games Keeper and get that little extra burst of mana as well. Super interesting. For the sideboard, it looks like he's hedging against artifact decks, which I don't blame him. There are a decent amount in our meta four naturalizes and a crumble. Looks like some Phantom Meshivas as well. Excellent for those aggro matchups. Engineering Plague makes a lot of sense as well. And the Grizzly Fates, which is one of my cards I've been brewing with lately, is very interesting to see. I'm curious to see what uh, deck that may come in for. But without further ado, let's get to his opponent. Next up, we have Moe's on Sly. Trading in those goblins, I see, for the top deck from last month's tournament. And I do see some inspiration there too with three flame rifts in the main. Hey, if it worked out so well for last month, why not this month? And uh, other than that, it's looking like a pretty standard sly list. I see the Frexian Furnaces in the side. Makes a lot of sense. We got a decent amount of graveyard focus decks here in the meta. I have seen some lists running around online that actually puts some Frexian Furnaces in the main as well. I guess the reason why is you're just hedging on them being useful, but also they are a good way to potentially draw a card if Furnace is a dead card in the match. Not saying it's the right call, but it's something I've seen. So yeah, this will be a pretty interesting matchup. Moses is definitely going to have the advantage game one, just being so aggressive that, <laughs> well, Chris is going to have a hard time catching him. Assuming Chris does keep a hand with an oath, then this will be a lot more interesting, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So without further ado, let's get into game one. Game number one. Here we go. So it looks like we're rolling to go first, and ooh, Moe's is the winner. Definitely what you want to see for uh, the aggro matchup, that is for sure. Again guys, I'm going to apologize for the little bit of camera shake and uh, the glare that's been prevalent throughout these videos. I got plans, <laughs> we're definitely fixing it uh, for next month. Moe's going to lead into what I'm assuming is a Grim Lava Mancer, and Chris is going to fire off right away with a Duress, not even giving Moe's the chance to finish shuffling his deck. So it looks like we got a Fire Blast, a Fire Bolt, a Ball Lightning, I think? Maybe that's a Shock? I think it's a Ball Lightning. And two Mountains. No, that looks like a Shock. Pretty sure. But yeah, so Chris with no answer to the turn one Lava Mancer. Just going for a hand attack here. Let's go play on another mountain and it's just going to pass. Uh, oh no, okay, he's going to swing in for two. Going down to 19 and ooh, we got a flame rift. Everybody take four. <laughs> Makes sense. That is a uh, very efficient damage dealer for sure. It looks like we got a pernicious deed for Chris. Uh, greenback plane, pain land. Um, and we got another duress. Oh boy. All right. So we're going to hit uh, fire blast. I take one off the pain land. And let's just 
Cabal as well and hit the Shock. Okay, well, Chris definitely came prepared with Hand Attack. Um, but does he have a threat? Does he have a way to end the game? Did, did he just draw another dress? He drew another dress. <laughs> Playing out the Wasteland, taking a point, damage. I'm assuming this is a Pernicious Deed coming down. Yes, okay. Uh, which, by the way, there is a lot of signatures in Chris's deck. I absolutely love it. So cool to see. Okay. Yeah, Moe's passing the turn. Plenty of mana up to activate that Lava Master. Plenty of cards to exile again to its ability. And... With two guards in hand, maybe a Duress makes sense. Maybe. All right, we're gonna activate Pernicious Deeds first. That makes sense. Use up at least a little bit of mana just in case. And then, yeah, with no, no th I mean, actually, does he have a Terrorbore in hand? There's not enough lands in the graveyard to to justify playing out the Terrorbore. Oh, we're just gonna Fire Blast. Going down to five and revealing a mountain. Oh, and another Flame Rift, taking Chris down to one. This is not good. Literally any burn spell off the top is going to be good enough for Moe's. And Chris can only pass, getting a little flooded there, it looked like. And Moe's, what do you got? Don't slow roll it. I believe that's uh, another... Or is that a Jackal Pop? Um, I don't know. Whatever it is, it can do more than one damage. Does Chris have an answer? He does not. We are done with game number one. Okay, let's jump into game number one. That was a blisteringly fast first game. But when Sly's got it, Sly's got it. Uh, Chris definitely kept a hand that was a little more reactive. So we'll see if he can hold on to something with a bit more of a threat, uh, a bit more of a clock, or at the very least, some blockers for those aggressive creatures that are in Moses' deck. But it looks like this is not going to be the hand to keep, so shipping it back for hopefully a better six. Moses is going to be keeping. I imagine the Phantom Nashivas uh, came in from Chris, and I'm not sure what else, maybe an Engineer Plague or two, I can't see why that would be super good oh let's yeah <laughs> let's not deal out eight um yeah i think probably just the the phantom machine is one of the downsides of playing uh green black is you don't have access to circle protection red warmth all of those great cards that really help in this aggro matchup all right looks like we got a keepable six and chris is gonna play out Treetop Village and a sign Mox Diamond and is pitching the signed Treetop Village? Chris, why not pitch the unsigned one? <laughs> You're gonna look at it longer. I mean, I love your deck and all the signatures, but come on, man. And we got another duress though to lead things off. Uh, much better initially in turn one than on the play. So we got two fire blasts. Uh, I think that one is. A ball lightning, yes. Um, an incinerate, a barbarian ring, something ring, and a mountain, and maybe that's a lava mancer. <laughs> Not quite sure. No, oh, we're gonna play it out though. Oh, I think that is. Yep. Yeah, okay, that is a lava mancer. Cool, cool. Already has fodder in the graveyard, and I believe that's a new. Border mulch. It looks like it's a mulch. Ooh, hitting an Ashiba is not what you want to see. Another mulch and another duress. Picking up the pain land. It's not great. Can take one off of that. And do we have another? Oh, innocent blood. Okay. I was gonna say, is this just gonna be a repeat of last game with I think was all four duresses? That was pretty close. Alright. Moe's having a bit of think here. 
going to play out the ring and pass. Alright, Chris, just giving a quick look through his graveyard. Uh, I think there's a Terror in hand. No, it was going to animate the Treetop Village. Very dangerous against two open red and immediately incinerated. That is unfortunate. And is going to play another Painland, which is also unfortunate to see, and pass the turn. Mana fixing in pre-modern hurts a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, and we got a ball lightning coming in uh, and just gonna hit for six. That's gotta hurt. I think that's the old legends art too, which is probably the best art. Gonna, gonna be honest. Um, also, I think the only one that's an old border. No, 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 that's not true. There's also the, the beat down art, which is still cool, but not my preferred. Legend just has some mystique to it too. All right, looks like we're gonna be casting out that Terror taking one off of one of the pain lands and passing the turn. I was asking how big it is. I think it's just a two, two. Definitely a valid target for those um, blasts, but at the same time, that's four damage to waste on a two, two creature. Nope, might as well just Use the shock he drew last turn. All right. Uh, oh, just gonna cycle a land here. Another sign land, very cool. And gonna pass the turn. Did he draw a wasteland? Probably could have played that, right? Oh, lightning bolt to the face. Going down to nine. All right, Moe's with a jackal pup. Okay, we have a lot of pressure, being very uh, open about the fact that he's got eight damage in hand, potentially. Okay, that is a wasteland. Gonna come in and hit the, the ring. And... I think... Mose is gonna... He does have threshold, right? Or he will... After the, okay, so he's floating the mana, getting Threshold, and then activating Barbarian Ring to deal two damage to a player. Very smart play. Uh, taking Chris down to three. Oof, down to two. And how big is that Terror exactly? I think it's a 6-6. A six, six? No, it's a 7-7 it's a seven, seven because of the Wasteland, right? Pretty sure? Ooh, thank you, Chris. The dice help. Yes, it is a 7-7. Seven, seven. So a very big threat. But who's drawing a mountain, which is also <laughs> a very big threat at this point, uh, having that lethal damage in hand. Uh, let's see. I th is that a second Terravore in hand for Chris? I think it's a Thicket and a Terravore. Interesting. All right, so we're going to swing in for seven. This probably makes sense. You want to get a clock. Uh, taking a point, though, off of another Painland for the second Terror that, that was what was in hand. And Moe's needing a mountain and gets a fetch land, which is just as good. Goes and fetches for a mountain and domes for four. And that is game number two. Moe's cleaning it up in a 2-0 sweep. And that's going to do it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I regret to inform you we only have one more video this month. I'm going to try and get it done before the new year. But I also want to let you know that next month's PM, 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 PM uh, videos, the Portland Monthly Tournament, are going to be happening a little later in the month. Potentially not even releasing until next, well, February. <laughs> uh, the tournament for next month is happening towards the end of the month mostly due to all the holidays and everything going on. So I'll try to come up with some videos in the meantime. I got some ideas. Uh, we'll see what happens soon. But in the meantime, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos coming out. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.